to speak, pretend that I'm dreaming. I smell your breath, not listening, but I still hear you screaming. Going under. One step away till you hear what I'm saying. Sounds like thunder. And the clouds are closing in. You see, I know this, but the last days in real life I've noticed. Losing focus, breaking up from our life as we know it. If someone had told me that I will take off and find something greener, greener than Morning and welcome to another experience video. Experience videos are where I show you around every detail about a car, a new car, an old car, a car that interests me, and then we take it out and go for a drive after it. So today we have the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quadrifoglio, which is basically Alfa Romeo's latest and greatest car. Um, this is a four-seater, uh, four-door, well, five-door technically, saloon, and is what people are saying is going to bring Alfa Romeo back to the mainstream as a sports car maker. Now, this thing is absolutely awesome. I've been lucky enough to be driving it around all morning and get experienced with it. It is one of the most fun cars, and if not the most fun saloon I have ever driven. So. Let's walk you around all of the details. This particular car in this is in a beautiful triple layer paint. Now this one comes out at about 65,000 pounds, which is a lot of money, but considerably less than its competitors, such as the C63 AMG, the BMW M3 or M4, and all of those guys. Car and driver actually named this best in its class. So let's walk around. Then we'll talk you through the figures, the stats, and all of that stuff. First things first, they changed on the Quadrifoglio compared to the diesel, a bit of the front grille. Now here we have the adaptive cruise control um, uh, sensors right here. We've got the washer fluids for the, um, for the lights, which are placed right here, and all of the parking sensors around. It's got the typical so Alfa Romeo badge, an Alfa Romeo style grille, and then a lot of carbon fiber around the outside. So we've got this carbon fiber front splitter, which has no protector. The car's not very low, but you still want to be quite careful not to hit that because I can imagine there's not a cheap repair. We've then got two grills here, sending air through to the twin turbocharged V6, which puts out 505 horsepower, but more of that in a bit. We've then got on this car, it's on uh, Pirelli P0 courses, which are an option on this. Very thin sort of wall on the tire, but still remains very comfortable if you've got it in with the most comfortable mode that you can get. This car also has the steel brakes, which are ample enough for road use. If you're gonna use it a bunch from track, probably not the right car in the first place to do that with, but you can get the option of carbon ceramics, but they're over 5,000 pounds, so very expensive option. Around the side, we've got the classic Alpha a uh, little badge there as well with another grill. All of these are actually useful. They're not just there for looks, they are actually useful to filter air through the bodywork. Um, around the side, you can still see this beautiful color with carbon fiber side skirts as well, which are quadrifoglio only. You can't get those on the diesel, um, but it looks really cool. Also, everything all blacked out, which is really nice, and super tinted rear windows. Like, you literally, if I so I put my hand, well you can't, oh yeah, you can see it, can't you? But no, on anyways, camera it's hard to see. On camera it's hard to see. They're really tinted, surprisingly tinted rear windows. Uh, around back, you've got your fuel right here, your fuel thing, so petrol engine, obviously. Um, it's actually quite massive, that, isn't it? Mm. And then in the back, we've got these slightly um, tinted, smoked out rear lights, which look very cool in the Quadrifoglio, with a nice uh, spoiler lit back here, finished off in carbon as well. And the diffuser is completely different. It's all in plastic. This would have been really cool to have in carbon, or you said in piano gloss black. It would have been awesome. We've got the Ferrari-derived um, uh, tailpipes, the exits for the exhaust, which are very cool at a slight angle. So there's four of those. Now then if I take the key, you can see on the key here, there's an unlock, lock, and then there's a boot button. So if I press that twice, after unlocking the car, it opens the boot up, which is absolutely massive. So to prove this to you, I am gonna get in. No problems at all. Could literally sleep in here comfortably. Ciao. Is there the, the inside uh, pop option? Yes, there is a button you can pull to unlock the inside. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of room. Now then, there is also a little cubby down here. Here we have some Julia uh, publicity plates, but you've also got your little spare tire cubby down there. Now then, shall we show you the engine? We don't actually know how to open the, the bonnet on this car yet. We haven't done it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's try and figure it out. Usually on, on right-hand drive cars, it's under the side here, but we couldn't find it earlier. So, let's give this a go. Oh, found it. Found it, here it is. 
twin turbocharged V6. Now then, where's the latch? Okay, boom. Here it is. So, Ferrari engineered twin turbocharged V6, 505 horsepower. Um, sounds pretty good, nothing crazy, but it makes some nice pops and bangs, especially if you've got it in race mode. It opens up the valves even at idle. Uh, 3.6 seconds to 60, 191 miles an hour top speed. Carbon fiber bonnet, so it's super light. I wish you guys could feel this, it's very light. Also carbon fiber roof. Now it's all painted so you can't see it uh, from the outside, but when you open it up, it's a nice surprise to see it all in carbon like that. And then here you can see the entrances for the grill. Now the inside is where you'll spend most of your time in this car. So if you hop in the passenger seat, which is Where's that one seat? right there, I'm still not used to this whole <laughs> right hand drive scenario. Things get interesting. So, it's a flurry of Alcantara leather and uh, carbon fiber. However, there are a few plastics which aren't that nice. So, for example, one that you feel a lot is around this gear lever right here. It's a, you said it feels a bit like the, the inside of a Prius, this gear yeah. lever. It's not the nicest plastic. And then on the doors, for example, right down here, you've got some cheap feeling plastic. So, in a car that's about 65 grand, you would expect slightly better. But apart from that, everything else is all leather, like for example up here with the um, contrast red stitching. Same thing on the seat, which has a center of uh, Alcantara with the embossed headrest with the Alfa Romeo logo. Carbon fiber right here on the doors, and then you get round to what is our favorite side of the car, this steering wheel, which is finished off an Alcantara on the top, contrast stitching, leather on the sides, and carbon on the bottom. So this is probably my favorite touch of the whole inside of this car. Now when we come round, I'll come back to the steering wheel in a bit, but on the center console, we've got all of this here, which is carbon fiber, as well as up on the passenger display area. Really nice touch, surrounded by leather. Now then, leather is continued here onto the uh, center cubby, which is pretty large. You've also got a USB um, input there and an aux input, as well as a 12 volt outlet. There's another USB input down here, and another 12 volt, uh, well, cigarette uh, lighter output right there. Now then, center console, let's start there. You got your parking brake, electric parking brake, followed by an MMI styled inspired. A uh, little knob for your um, for your central display, so you can control everything with your quick menu and option buttons. The radio controls, volume on and off, and then here is where things get interesting. You have four different driver modes. So A is basically for all weather. Um, so you put that if you're in snow or rain or anything like that. Natural, normal, which is your sort of everyday driving mode. Dynamic, which sort of stiffens up the steering, throttle response, suspension slightly, makes it a tiny bit louder. And then race, you have to push it and hold it all the way over there. And that puts everything off, all traction control and everything, makes the exhaust a tiny bit louder. And, and is basically the mode you want to drive it in most of the time. And this button you can press, it's basically like in Ferraris, you have a bumpy road button. So you press that and it makes everything a little bit more comfortable. It's boiling hot in here, isn't it? It is. Super warm. Anyways, here we have our climate control buttons above the USB outlet, so pretty straightforward. No heated seats or anything in this one, despite it having the comfort seats and not the bucket carbon seats, which you can get as well as an option. Then we've got the screen, so I'm going to have to put the car on, so key in your pocket, press the Ferrari-derived start button, and the car will fire into life. Quite a quiet startup, to be mm -hmm. honest. But once you started it, you've got this beautiful screen here, which is slightly angled towards the driver, which is really nice. You've also got your Harman and Kardon um, little logo there because the speakers, as you can tell over there, are Harman and Kardon and sound fantastic. So let's switch the radio off. But you have all your different modes. You can plug in your phone, you have your radio, you have your navigation, you have everything that you would really need. The steering wheel, which is where things are really, really nice. You've got your cruise control buttons here. Uh, adaptive cruise control actually in this car, so it'll actually brake for you if a car comes in front of you. And then all of your phone and radio settings and then your start button. One of my favorite touches are these huge paddles, which are actually attached to the steering column, so you always know where they're gonna be. They don't move with the steering paddle. Very simple, you got plus, uh, minus and plus, so if you wanna go up a gear, oh, I just sprayed the, the windscreen. Uh, if you wanna go up a gear, you just press on the right and down a gear on the left. But then if you wanna go into neutral, you just pull both at the same time, which is very Ferrari derived. Now then, if you are in manual mode like this, and you pull both paddles into neutral, the gear lever will actually move back into place as follows. Manual, boom, there, there you go. go. Anyways, yes, so <laughs> you've got all of that around here, then you've got your stalks behind, so but not like Ferraris where you've got all your indicator stalks and everything on the steering wheel. This is still um, an alpha sort of way of doing it. Uh, we've then got 
all of the analog, um, so you got your revometer and your speedometer here, which has kilometers and miles an hour, and then a screen in the middle which shows you your range and a bunch of different settings, um, which is really nice to have and actually very easy to read. Now then, when we get down here, there's another little cubby with uh, your two cup holders, and then round back, there is actually loads of headroom in the front and in the back, but you're really short on legroom. You can't see it behind me because I'm tiny, but behind Ayo, for example, you can tell there's really not much legroom. The seats are really nice though, Alcantara and leather with the contrast stitching. And actually one fun fact about this car, you can't put the rear seats down and there's no, uh, in the middle seat, you can't put it down to get your skis through. So the boot is the boot and you can't put the seat down. <laughs> your skis? Yeah, if you want to put your skis <laughs> through the middle seats. How random can, is that? Yeah, it's a random fact, but there you go. So you can't put the seats down to get more storage, which all of its competitors can do. It does sound good, however, so if you hop out, I'll whack it into sport uh, race mode. Yeah. And you can hear that exhaust. Do this. better on the move because it starts doing a bunch of cracks and stuff so why don't we start It's not like back in the day when Very nice. 
sliding. That's one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. This car will slide around like no other, being rear wheel drive. If you don't have any temperature, these Pirelli P0s, you can literally just put your foot down, not even half throttle input, and it will get sliding. It is so much fun to drive. The noise, even though it's not crazy, you get a really nice input when you change gear, and it's fantastic. I've honestly driven this car for a day, and I would tell you guys, if I don't like it, I'm under no sorts of contracts or anything to say things. This car has come through Shell, you are promoting Shell V Power, which I should probably tell you guys about is about 99% the same fuel they use in the Ferrari race cars, Formula One cars. It's one of the best fuels, if not the best fuel, I think out there. I'm addicted to it. Wherever I go, I look for a shell and I put V-Power in it. And they've provided this car for me very kindly. So I'm just giving you my honest opinion about this car. My honest opinion is it is very, very good fun. Mainly just because it puts a smile on my face. And that's what it's all about. I mean, maybe the steering is not quite as communicative as in an M3. The chassis isn't quite as rigid and as adjustable between all the different modes as in an M3. But in terms of putting a smile on my face, this does this one. It's got that Italian flair behind it. Even though you don't have the problems of everything breaking, I'm sure there are cases where things break, but as there are in an M3, it's not like in the old days where you had such a big price to pay for having that Italian flair. Now you can get that Italian flair, but also have somewhat of the German reliability. So it's super special. It's a car that I've totally fallen for and that I would just was super excited to do a video on because of how much I like it. I just wanted to share this with you guys. The, the quality feel inside is not incredible. I mean, you don't feel like you're in an S-Class or anything, but it's definitely ample enough. Like you can definitely um, feel that they've put, they've stepped it up compared to, for example, I drove a 4C not that long ago and we did a video on the 4C and that did feel like there were a lot of plastics all over. This for 65 grand is really rather good in that department. So overall, in case you guys hadn't noticed, I think it performs well. I think it's it's perfectly usable every day. It's uh, spacious, it's good looking in my opinion, but that's subjective, so I don't want to talk about it too much. Um, it sounds good, probably not good enough for me, but it does sound good. And just the way it feels, it makes me smile. So I, uh, I do genuinely really like this car.